guys, Slings coming at you with a new behind the scenes with Slings. Uh, this one's going to be on how to make a fence. All right? um, I asked in my last one, what would you guys like to see? And I got a couple people asking me, show how you make the fence and maybe a couple other props. So today's mostly going to be about the fence. I'll show you a couple other things maybe. Um, but anyways, materials you're going to need. You're going to need a can of spray paint. And this is like a hammered spray paint. It's got I don't know if you can see the texture on there. It's like a silver with black mixed into it. It is a little pricey. I got it free from work, but a can of this will probably run you about four, close to four dollars. If you don't want to use that, you want to use something cheaper, you can get this acrylic paint from Walmart for like 80 cents. Just a gray paint um, and then mix in some black with it or something pretty much gives you the same effect when you see it on camera because you can't really tell the difference unless you got like an HD camera or something. So this will work just fine. The only thing with this is you'll have to brush it on instead of just spraying it. Um, <clears throat> Next you'll need some dowel rods. Once again you get these pretty cheap at a craft store or at Walmart or something like that. And this for the legend scale I use a quarter inch by 36 you're not going to be able to see it. But anyways, that's what it is. It's a quarter inch dowel rod. And these are mad cheap. You could get these for like, and you can see how big they are, um, for like $0.24 cents to $0.84. Cents. Um, real cheap for these. You can use these for a lot of things too. I use them for a lot of stuff. Um, and then, lastly, what you'll need is a roll of chicken wire. That's what I call it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, gardening fence, I guess you could call it, too. And you're looking for a pattern. Sorry for the shaky camera. A pattern like this. The square pattern. All right, so that's what you're looking for. And I'll show you how to make it look like, a, you know, the diamond pattern in just a minute. Real easy. Just all you got to do is cut. So, anyways, this you could pick up a lot of times at a garden store, or Lowe's, or Home Depot. If you buy it at one of those places, you're going to look anywhere between four to six dollars for a whole roll of this. Now, out of this roll, you could probably make about ten to fifteen of those. So, you could get a lot out of it. Um, what I do is I pick these up at construction sites. I mean, they just throw them away. They use them a lot of times for like their um, wash centers and stuff like that and they throw the excess away and that's where I get it from. That's it for materials. Now as far as tools, the tools you're going to need, it's um, a pair of scissors or what I like to use is these wire cutters and these are electrical cutters. Uh, they're just craftsmen and the reason I like these is because it's got the cut in the middle there and then at the end, it's got the pinchers, which is good for bending the wire. So you got the cutter here, and these are all cutters too, and then you got the pinchers at the end. So these are really good to and use. Some of the things I got planned for the fence that I haven't done yet, and I'm probably going to do on this video, or you'll see it in my next display video, the finished product, um, is right now I just have a solid, you can see it's just solid, right? What I'm planning on doing is, let me just get this stuff out of the way, <clears throat> is putting bars going through it also. So it looks more like a legit fence, you know. So I'm going to have some of them going like this, and then I'm going to have others going like this to break it up so it's not just one solid thing. I think it'll look a lot better like that. What I want to do is take your roll, and you're going to cut a piece off of it, all right, and then with that piece, you want to cut it in a diamond angle. So when you get the piece, it's going to look like squares. All right, this is how it's going to start. How you want to do is turn it and cut it. So you want to, you can see I already cut this piece because I don't want to get into the long process of cutting it. But see where I cut it? So it's like a diamond or triangle. All right, now you're going to lose some of the material when you do that, but it's going to be worth it because it looks more like a fence when you got it cut in a diamond shape. 
can see there it is there. Um, so anyways, that's the first thing you want to do. And it's real easy to cut. I'll just show you how to cut one piece of it just so you just bring it in to your cutter piece. Doing this with one hand. There it is. Now it's cut. Oh, I cut it right off. So that's it. Real easy to cut it. Anyways, I'm sure you guys know how to use a pair of cutters. But and if you don't, and if you're underage, make sure you get uh, parents' permission before you do anything. <laughs> then what you want to do is take your dowel rods, measure it up with your fence, and just cut them. So I already pre-cut one here. And then you take your spray paint, you spray it, and let's see if you can see the material here. Nah, uh, maybe, maybe not. Anyways, it does, oh, there we go. See how it's got the black in between it? It looks like a piece of steel. It's no longer looking like wood, right? There's wood behind it, and there's what the dowel rod looks like now. So it looks really good in a display. Um, I wish it was a little bit lighter color like the fence, or I might also spray the fence. That's another idea. But when you get that roll, if you buy it brand new, what you'll get is this will hold, be holding it together. Save this. Don't throw this away. What you're going to do is snip a piece off, and you're going to use that as your ties. So I should have had one already cut, but I'm going to cut a piece off. Now these become, and I'm not going to show you the tying process, but I tie the dowel rod onto it. Okay, and it looks just like how a fence is too when you get it done. So I like to put, you know, on a fence about this length, I put four of them. I got one there, one there, there, and there. What these also do, if you leave a little excess on the end of it, oh, and then, of course, you got to take the ends. Once you put it on there, take the, the crimp ends and just spin it around a bunch of times. All right, that'll make it tight, and this thing ain't going anywhere once you get it like that. Also, this roll is gonna—it's hard to get straight. When you put the dowel rods on like this, it'll straighten it out. It'll make it real nice. Um, also, if you leave some excess on these, on each one of these, it'll help it to stand up. All right, it's I'm not gonna do it right now because I've been playing with it. But anyways. It'll help it stand up, but you'll need other things to also stand it up, you know. Uh, placement is everything. So, yeah, that's pretty much it with that. Here's a, a larger one that I made, and I haven't finished it. I just started this one before the video. I was trying to show it. I recorded a video with me showing making this whole thing. The video ended up being like 15 minutes long, so I just pre-made them. I mean, I think I'm explaining it well enough that you guys could do it on your own. This is a real cheap and easy way to make a fence and I think these look really dope in a display. I mean they look real nice. Um, it's a lot cheaper than buying the octagon ring from UFC even though those, those look real nice but they're mad expensive to get those so this is a lot cheaper and you can make a lot more of it. So here I got Wolverine kind of cutting through the fence. You know I'm not even close to being done. I just put it up real quick just to show what I got in store for it. But, yeah, you guys, I think you see my vision. I got to still put the, the brace rods going through it and everything, but I kind of made the fence look like it was mangled and falling down after he cut it. I'll probably post a picture of that on Facebook. And here, on this dark background, I just want to show you the fence again. It's easier to see. I shouldn't have done it with that wood behind it, but there's the ties. You can see a lot better. So... Yeah, and you'll see a finished product, with, like I said, with the rods going through it. I'll, I'll do that, and you'll see it eventually in one of my videos. I just think that looks dope. I got something good planned for that. JJ, this is for you. I know you like your figures uh, well done. And then in there I got a green goblin muffin for you. <laughs> this is how I do my uh, head swaps. I put it in the toaster oven, really low heat. Put it on warm and for a short amount of time. There we go. He's done. Put it on a piece of tin foil so it doesn't burn the figure. 
Okay, so there's the head. I'll show you. I could do it with one hand though. Boom! Head comes right off. No problems. Still very ch tight neck joint. Nothing happened to it. Okay, nothing wrong with the figure. Then I'll take... Let me put this damn camera down. <clears throat> There's my kid in the background too. I'll take another head. Which, this is a sculpted Xavier head. I sculpted it with the wax. Gave him some Norman hair. Anyways. So now I got a Norman custom, I guess. Yeah, it looks alright. Well, here's another one. I'll heat this up real quick while I'm talking about something else. So I did this Taskmaster, which I think some of you guys have seen this before. And this is just a baby of Red Skull and Taskmaster. They had the children. I popped the head off of this, put it onto this, and painted it white. That's all that is. And I removed that chest piece. I just didn't like it, so I don't know. I got to fill in the chest now and make the cape stronger. But anyways, <clears throat> I've done a head swap with the Spider-Man before. And this is, I didn't use the toaster oven or the hair dryer method. And now look at how loose this thing is. This is the boiling water method. And this is what happened to me. Um, so I like this one a lot better. Okay, another one done. Nothing wrong with the peg at all. Nothing wrong with the head. The hole's not messed up. Yeah, there's another head swap I did with the uh, Xavier body. I took that Xavier head off and I used it for my Norman custom. By the way, with that head that I showed you for the Norman Osborne head I did with the Xavier head, um, that wax comes right off so it becomes Xavier again. You know, you just got to watch when you're posing it that you don't move the wax around too much. But anyways, here's the Tony. And the head... The hole peg for this is much larger than the actual peg on this body. I just added wax to it, stuck it right on there, and it's fine. It moves around real nice. So, um, And thanks to Bug for hooking me up with this Crimson Dynamo and some ACBA stickers. It's kind of dark in there right now, but what I'm trying to do is, and I'm going to make a better one, is make a billboard out of that ACBA sticker. Oh, there I got the I don't know I gotta make it a little bit better but it's supposed to be a billboard so anyways oh and the wall I forgot about the wall a lot of people have been asking where I get the wall from I've told you before I took the video down but you get that from Lowe's I got those for free from a construction site but yeah those come from Lowe's they're about anywhere between 12 and 15 dollars a piece so they're pretty pricey Run, Tony, run. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, behind the scenes with slings. And like I said before, if there's anything else you guys want to see, just leave it in the comments, and I will definitely do it for you, all right? So have a good one, and peace.